Yesterday we did maps. The day before that was clowning, but the day before that was Shel Silverstein. And before that we did the poet uh, Carson Ellis. So today is, it's actually uh, the book I'm gonna show you, it's called A Beetle is Shy. I'm gonna switch cameras so you can see it. I'll look down. So it's called A Beetle is Shy. And the reason I picked this book was because of the illustrations. So this book, I think is the only one this week that has had an author and an illustrator. So the author, her name is Diana Hutz Ashton. She's the one who did all the words in this book. And Sylvia Long is the illustrator. So she's the one who has, is doing all these amazing kaleidoscopic beetle images. And the reason I, I just love this book is because there's just, there's so many beautiful colors and shapes of beetles that you just, I, I would never have guessed. I, I think to me, a beetle has always been like a, a like a little brown thing that is their bl brown or black thing that's like creep, that creeps me out. But in reality, beetles can be really, really beautiful. So we'll look at a couple pages of this. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to do your own symmetric beetle. So symmetric means it's the same on one side as it is on the other. And if you notice on some of these beetle pictures, they're almost all pretty symmetrical. So uh, they're the same on each side. If I folded them down the middle, what happens on one side happens on the other side. I just love this. I love these, I love all the colors and the shapes and the patterns in these beetles. So it's called a beetle is shy. I'm not gonna read all of it, but look, this is called a feather horned beetle. You can see his, his horns have these like little tendrils and he's like black and white spotted. So like I said, I'm not gonna read all of it, but I'm gonna flip through to find the best pictures. So it's, it's, it's basically talking about how a beetle, a beetle's life cycle, how they hatch from, from an egg into a larva. This is my favorite page. It's, it's like the cover because it's like, um, it's like a kaleidoscope. So cool. So it says, while many beetles are black or brown, some are, are iridescent or shimmery and rainbow colored. I know here in California, um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure where you guys are from, but in, I'm in Southern California and we have these giant beetles. They're called like fruit eating beetles. They love to eat fig trees and they're like, they're like this size, they're huge. And they're this like shimmery green color and they're really, really pretty. Although they are really loud. <laughs> and when they fly up, they're like, they're just really, they, 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 their buzzing sound is crazy loud. So, oh, this is, this is crazy. So this is the, one of the largest beetles in the world. It's called a Titan beetle. And it's actually almost seven inches long. And it's mandibles or it's jaws are powerful enough to snap a pencil in half. So it could snap this pencil in half with its jaws. That's crazy. I think I would be really scared if I saw that beetle in real life. Uh, a beetle can also be really, really tiny. This is one of the smallest ones. It's called a North American feather wing beetle. And it, it's small enough that it can pass through the eye of a needle. That's how tiny it is. I definitely don't want to encounter a Titan beetle though. <laughs> Oh, this is cool. A beetle is tasty. So pe beetles are found on every continent except Antarctica. And they're, a, they're really protein rich and they're plentiful. And so in lots of places around the earth, they're eaten. So in India, people eat uh, something called stag beetle chutney. In Vietnam, coconut tree beetle larva soup. Thailand, they might eat wok fried dung beetle. Papua New Guinea, it's roasted palm weevil larva. They'll eat it. In Australia, they'll eat roasted longhorn beetle larva. Crazy, right? It says in the United States, you can snack on mealworm ice cream. I don't know about you, but I've never seen mealworm ice cream, but who knows? I'll look out for it. I don't know if I'll eat it, but <laughs> in the Netherlands, apparently you can try chocolate infused with mealworms. Interesting. So these are just some of the things that like a beetle can do, like some beetles dig. I love these ones. These ones are called rainbow scarab beetles and they look like triceratops to me with their like giant horns and they're like, it looks like they're like their shields, their bone shields. And the colors are just so cool looking. Some beetles run and some beetles hop. 
Some, some of them swim. Let's see. Okay. Oh. oh where, where I grew up in Georgia, we don't, we don't have them here in California, but fireflies. Have you ever seen a firefly at night with the glowing night, uh, glowing, um, the gl their glowing tails? They're, what that is, it's like a, they flash their, their tails to either attract a mate or to defend their territory, sometimes to warn away predators. As a kid, it'd be really fun to go to catch the fireflies. Fireflies only live in places where it's really humid, unlike uh, Southern California where it's really dry here. So they don't, they don't live here, but uh, they, they do live in other places. Ooh, these are like how beetles guard themselves. Some beetles camouflage themselves. Soren, yeah, I see you have a hand up. What's up? So, <clears throat> um, I have two things to ask you. Sure. Does human mean what? Does human mean, wait, say that, ask the question again. What does, hu does human mean what? Human. Human means like us. We are human. Oh, humid. Oh, well, humid. I'm humid. oh, sorry. Sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. Humid. Good question. Humid. Yeah. Humid does mean wet. Humid. It's like, uh, like where there's uh, water in the air. Exactly. It does mean like wet. And so I also have something else to tell you. Yeah. So I, we, we didn't have, I didn't have any like medium sized paint brushes. I only had this small one. That will work. That's a perfect size one. That one totally works. All right. <laughs> I see somebody has a fig tree and they had 50 of those big beetles. Yeah, they're really loud. <laughs> the big like fruit eating beetles are really loud. So some beetles camouflage themselves like this acorn weevil camouflages itself on acorns. Some are toxic or poisonous. Like this is called the blister beetle and it's it, it like secretes, which means like it like emits it like it comes out of it a toxin that burns the skin and causes swelling. So you really wouldn't want to touch a blister beetle. Um, I don't think I've ever, I don't know where blister beetles live, but I don't think they, they live in the United States that I know of. Arrow beetles are somewhere in Africa. They're, they're called arrow poison beetles. And the African tribes use the juices of the beetles and they put them on the tips of their arrows to kill large animals, which is crazy. This is a beetle, it's called a wasp beetle. And it doesn't, it's actually really harmless, but it, uh, it, it is, the way it's colored and shaped makes it look like it's a wasp. And so it like, it warns away enemies. And this is, oh, this one's called a bombardier beetle. And the bombardier beetle, it releases a boiling spray that changes into gas, which stings the eyes and creates a smoke screen to confuse its enemies. So these are the ways that a beetle can protect itself. So beetles can be helpful, like ladybugs are actually really helpful in gardens because they eat aphids and aphids are like these tiny little bugs that kill your plants if you have too many of them. That's why a healthy garden will always have uh, ladybugs in it. And sometimes they're harmful, like, like the fruit beetles. <laughs> and they can, they, can, they can destroy all of your figs if you're not careful. Um, a beetle is prehistoric. They've been... Fossils show that beetles inhabited the earth when, when the dinosaurs died um, almost 300 million years ago. That makes them millions of years older than butterflies, bees, and other insects. So this is like beetles that are preserved in amber. They're fossilized. Crazy. So, all right. I'm not going to read all of this. Ooh, uh, let's look at, look at that picture, though. Isn't that a crazy-looking beetle? I love his wings. Um, the one thing about a beetle, let's go to the last page which is all the beetles pictures with all of their names. The one thing I do know about beetles, and this is true of all beetles, regardless of their size or their color or their shape, is that all beetles have six legs. They have three on one side and three on the other side. Also, another thing that makes a beetle a beetle is it has three body parts. It has a head and it has something called a thorax and uh, the thorax is just the part that's right behind the head, the, the body part that's in the middle. And then it has the back part and the back part is called the abdomen. So it has a three parts, a head, a thorax and an abdomen. But like what the head, thorax and abdomen look like in every beetle is totally different. Some are, some are like really long and thin 
and some are really short and squat, but each of them does have like a little tiny head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So today, I thought it would just be kind of cool to try to make a beetle that was symmetrical. So how we're going to do it, I'm going to set this aside, is you're going to need a piece of paper. And on, what, what you're going to need to do with your paper is you want to turn it so that it is uh, vertical, not horizontal. You want, to you want to make sure that it's tall. It's like vertical paper. And fold your paper in half. You may want a couple of sheets of paper today because um, today is a little bit about experimenting and you may or may not like what the, happens with the first one. So if you don't like the first attempt at your beetle, you might want to have some backup paper to try a second or third because today is a little bit about um, uh, experimenting. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a beetle that is symmetrical. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm making sure that the fold is facing down. So the, it's folding up towards me like this. And I'm making sure that the line is going up and down. And starting at the top, and I can just use my pencil to start with, I'm going to uh, try, try to draw in the head. And I'm only going to draw in one half of, on uh, one side of the paper. So watch, I'm just going to do a curved line like this. And that's going to be my head. Okay, now, before I do anything else, actually, I'll, I'll draw in the whole side first. Okay, so I'm going to do the head like this. Then I'll do the thorax. The thorax is that middle part. So maybe it kind of comes out and then it goes in like this. So I'm only drawing half of it right now. So I had a head. I have half of a thorax. And then the last part I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw the abdomen. I'm only drawing half of it again. So I'm starting here. I'm gonna do a curved line down like that, okay? So right now I only have half, okay? And yours does not have to look like mine at all. <laughs> I'm just, this is just kind of a general, like we said, beetles all look very different. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna need your, your Crayola marker. And I suggest a darker color for this, like a black or a brown or a, a, a blue. And what we're gonna be doing is on top of the line that, you, that you've drawn, you're just gonna trace over it with the black marker. I'm gonna go ahead and trace that line with the black marker. I'll There's a it. question, can I, can I use a Sharpie? Or can it be no, a Sharpie? No, no, Megan, yeah, Sharpie, shar don't use a Sharpie. Good question, don't use a Sharpie. It has to be a marker that is water soluble. And the reason why is because we're going to get this side wet, and then we're gonna fold it over, and we're gonna print it. And so printing is what happens when you transfer what's happening on one side to the other side and Sharpies are permanent. So the, the water won't work with the Sharpie. So that's why it has to be like a Crayola or some, a marker that is called water soluble. So that what that means is that when you add water to it, you can see the ink bleeds out. So that's why you need a, 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 like a, a non-permanent marker. Okay, which, uh, uh, some Soren, question, Soren yeah. So I have a my, Myla marker. Is it okay if I use that? You know what? If you're not sure, because I don't know that brand, if you're not sure if a marker is going to work, what you should do is take a piece of scrap paper and and here I'll I'll try it with my sharpie to show you show you what, what will and won't work won't work won't what happen what won't what won't work. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I take I'll take some markers and I will test them on a paper. So this is my sharpie at the top. I'll do an S for Sharpie and a C for Crayola. And I'm going to take some water and I'm going to put them on top. I'm going to see the ink bleeds. So not much happened with the Sharpie. Let's see what happens with the Crayola. Oh, see how, the, see how you can see the color coming out a little bit with the Crayola? So test it, okay? Test it, Soren. Get a piece of paper and test it on, um, on the side, okay? Once you have those lines drawn, then, and this is the tricky part, or kind of tricky part, on each section that we drew, you're going to put some water. You're going to add some water. So I'm going to go ahead and add some water onto one section. Before I add any water onto the next section, I'm going to take my paper, I'm going to fold it, 
And I'm going to give it, I call it, give it a little massage. I'm going to rub it <laughs> because I want that part that I just drew to print. So let's see. And it's going to look a little strange because a printing isn't just, isn't like a drawing. Open it up. Ooh, you can see it's starting to print. So what I did, what happened on one side is starting to happen on the other side. So now I, I want to do this in sections because if I did it all at once, then the water in each section would dry and I wouldn't get a good print. So I'm going to do the second section like this. Laura is asking, can you use watercolor? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't mention watercolor because I, uh, I didn't know if everybody had it, but yes, you can absolutely use watercolor. Watercolor works just as well. This is just a trick for people who don't necessarily have watercolors at home. All right. You want to make sure you give it a, like a, a, a good rub before you open it up and see if it prints. It prints. If it doesn't print really well, then what you can do is just try again. Try to add a little bit more water. Try to fold it over and, and rub it and see if, see if it prints uh, the second time. But like I said, this project is a little bit free. So like the lines aren't going to be exactly the same on either side. And that's okay. It's, I don't mean for it to be exactly the same. I'm kind of going for a, like a, like a, a, a watercolory effect. So I'm doing my last line. I'm going to fold it over. Give it a little massage where I added that water. Let's open it up. Let's see what happens. Oh, kind of like it. And Soren has his hand raised. Soren, yeah. So mine turned out like this with my marker. Is it? Is it? Do, can you see? Can you see some of the color coming out of it? Of the I ink can, so when I rub the ink, it wasn't like completely like clear. It was like kind of a little blackish, white. Okay. Well, you can try it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, you can always just draw your beetle. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it. Um, this is just kind of a one, one way you can do it. Um, if you're not sure, you, you can always just draw your beetle in with a, with a regular marker if, if, this is, if this is too challenging or if your materials aren't working. It, one way to get, a, a, um, to get something symmetrical is if you're, if you're near a window, you can always draw your lines in with your dark marker, Soren, and then fold it and hold it up to a window, a bright window, and see if you can see through it to see the lines to trace it. Sometimes that helps, but otherwise if it, you can always just draw it, okay? It's totally I think Layla wanted to share hers. Sure, let's see. Whoa, that's, that came out cool. Nice, awesome, I'm glad some of these are working. Cool, all right, nice Layla. All right, so the next step, now that we've added in the head and the thorax. Oh, hi, hi, off now, you wanna share? Cool, awesome, that looks cool. That Very too. nice. <laughs> All right, so we have some more parts we need to add. So if you wanna draw them in with your pencil first, that's fine. Um, so the couple of the parts we're gonna add, we're gonna add in the mandible. The mandible is like the jaws and some beetles have these curved pieces that come up like that. So that's like his mandible. You might want to add that in. Then, like I said before, a, a beetle has six legs. And in their legs, their legs have sections. So I'm going to do some sections. I'm going to do the first leg coming out of the thorax, so that middle part. So it's going to be a curve like this. That's going to be one part of his leg. Not done yet, though. Then I'm going to have a second section coming out. And then maybe I'll do a third section. And then that third section, hmm, maybe I'll do, maybe it comes back out like this. That's my first leg. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and do my marker on top of those. So one, two, three, four. And now, remember, do these pieces one at a time. So I'm going to start with the mandible. I'm going to get it wet. And I'm not going to get the other parts wet yet. I'm going to take it. I'm going to fold it. Put 
open it up and see what happened. Cool. Very cool. Now I can do the other sections. If, 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 like I said before, if you don't like how something prints, you can try to go over it again. Maybe I, maybe that one didn't print as dark as I wanted. So maybe I'm going to go over it one more time and try it again. Let's see. Oh, cool. Kind of, kind of. So if you notice there's a lot of water, this is where your paper towel can be helpful. So I'm just going to use my paper towel and I'm just going to blot away some of the extra water I see at the top. When this dries, if this is not dark enough for you, I can take my marker and I might go back over it a little bit to make it a little darker. But I'm gonna wait for it to dry a little bit because I think it would be hard right now because it's so wet. So now I'm gonna do the first section of his leg. Or her leg, it's leg. <laughs> it's not gendered. All right, don't forget to give it a little massage. And go ahead and open. See what happens. <laughs> so it's this picture, it's almost like you have like the one side and then you have like the ghost side. This, the other side isn't gonna look just like the, the first side and that's okay. It's just a different style of art that we're doing. Second section, the leg. Okay, now I'll do my third section of the leg. So there's, <laughs> he looks like he's like shrugging. <laughs> he's got a shrug. He's like, hmm, what's going on guys? All right, so right now I only have two legs. So we all know that a beetle has six. So I need to add in two more legs. So I think that I'm going to start here in the second part of the second leg. I'm gonna do maybe one section coming up because there's we said beetles have different sections of their legs. And then maybe it comes down here. And then maybe one more little section there. So there's the second leg. And I'll do his third leg. And his third leg maybe is gonna come out from back here. So it's gonna come out like this. And maybe it's gonna come down. Oops, sorry. I'll put it up so you can see. And then maybe it comes out. All right, I'm happy with that. Cool. All right, now that I've drawn them in, I'm gonna start working in sections. Do one section at a time. And I'm gonna try printing them. So yeah, so what we're doing today is like a printing project. So printing is whenever you take a material and you transfer it, to another side or another sec another area. And we're using water to help us print, but a lot of times print people use paint to print. A lot of times people use um, uh, printing ink to print. Let's see. Try that one. Can get the last section. Cool. All right, I'm gonna print that last leg. So my beetle has a fifth and sixth leg. It does look like there's like a ghost side, which I kind of like, I kind of like this effect. Okay, that last section right here. Okay, cool. All right, so the last thing that I wanna do before I can start adding some colors is um, I can add in some details to the abdomen and maybe in the thorax. So I have some areas to color. So let's look again. I'm gonna show you the picture, pictures here. So here are some of the examples of the beetles. And you can see that a lot of them have these like 
areas and sections like 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 a, almost like a butterfly you know how what happens on one side happens on the other um so i might want to add in some areas or sections to so that i can color it in if i want my beetle to look more like a ladybug i can add in spots if i want my beetle to look more like uh this gold strife figure <laughs> i can add in like some lines this, the red speckled jewel beetle has like splotches the golden target beetle has a target shape so you could do a target shape on the back of yours. Totally up to you what kind of pattern you wanna make your beetle. Oh, the, the pigweed flea beetle has like stripes. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do, so once again, you're only working, when you do the, when you do the pattern, you're only working on one side. So sometimes I find it helpful to, hold, to like hold up my other side so that I know that I'm only gonna be drawing on this side. And I don't want to do too much because as you see, when the, when you, when the ink bleeds, it like, it makes it, um, it like the, the water goes, <laughs> when you press it, it, all the water squishes out. And so I don't want to do too many things. So I'm only going to do maybe one or two things, like one or two lines or shapes. So maybe I will do at the top, I'll just do a mix. On the top, I'll do a line on the thorax. And then on the bottom, I'll do a splotch. Okay, so now I have my two sections. I'm gonna go ahead and get them wet. One on the top first, print it. Ooh, that didn't print very well. Let's try again. Sometimes that happens. If it happens, just pick it up and try again. Kinda. I might have to go back over that one with a, with a marker when it's a little drier. And I'll do one more. I'll do the bottom section. Okay. Cool, that one kind of came out pretty good. All right, so normally I would say that we should just go ahead and start coloring this in but it really depends on how wet your paper is. If your paper is really, really wet, you might want to put it, put it to the side and make another beetle printing while you wait for it to dry. That may be what you wanna do. It just depends on how wet it is, how wet your, your paper is. Um, I am testing mine out right now to see yeah, it'll, it kind of works. So my, mine is, mine is kind, like I tried not to use too, too much water. So the mine is like only somewhat wet. It's kind of damp. So I think that I'll be able to start coloring mine in just for the example. But if you start coloring it in and your colors are running and it's not working for you, then set your, your pea paper aside. And the same way we just did the first one, just take a new piece of paper, fold it in half, and you can do another beetle or it doesn't even have to be a beetle. It could be a butterfly that you do. It could be something else that you do. Um, but I'm just going to keep working on mine because it's, I think it's, I think it's about dry enough. So the next step that you want to do is using the markers. I, I just pulled out a bunch of markers and I kind of want, I, I'm trying to think about what color scheme I want my beetle to have because all the beetles have different color schemes. So some beetles like are rainbow beetles and they literally go from like pinks to oranges with some yellows to greens to blues. You could have a rainbow color beetle. Some beetles are just like red and red and white, like a or red and black, like a ladybug. Some beetles um, have like blue bodies and red legs. So you want to think before you get started on what kind of color scheme you want your beetle to have like this beetle is just black and white splotch like spots okay so before i started i kind of like i love having a scratch paper nearby to kind of test out my colors to see if i like them and to see if they work well with each other but because this is a symmetrical beetle what you do on one side what you color on one side you have to color the same on the other side so I kind of love, I love this green color. 
So maybe I want to start coloring in this green color in his like leg. So I can start coloring here. But what I do on one side, I'm going to do on the other side. And sometimes you might have to guess a little bit at the shape because it's not as clear on the, on, on the side that you printed, but that's okay. See, there's a couple comments. Uh, Megan says, I didn't know and I printed mine with color. Oh, that's fine. That's totally fine. You can after, if, if you want to go back in and like color it in afterwards, um, you're t you can totally do that. And yes, if the question for watercolor is absolutely. You could definitely use watercolor. I just didn't specify it because I didn't know if everybody would have access to watercolor. But if you have access to watercolor and you, um, and you, and you want to use it, go for it. So I'm gonna, look, those are both good questions. But like I said, you're trying to be symmetrical. So what you do on one side, you should do on the other. Hmm. Like I said, I'm, I'm doing mine in a whole, I'm, I'm using all the greens I have because I just, I'm fascinated by like all the green colors of beetles. So in each section, I'm picking a different shade of green because I happen to have a lot of greens. <laughs> and oranges too. Maybe I'll do this is like an orangey color. Greens and oranges. I'm curious to see how everybody's came out. Does anybody having trouble with the printing or was it working pretty like pretty well for everybody? Thumbs up from Afna. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I saw Afna's. Afna's was printing pretty well. Soren has his hand up. Yeah, Soren, what's up? So my print turned out like this. Oh yeah, it's a little hard to see. Go back over it with marker. Go back over it on the um on the on the on the other side with marker to and make it a little bolder. Sometimes it didn't. Sometimes depending on the markers, some markers print better than others, and it's really hard to tell what which ones will print and which ones won't. So, but it was a good that was a good uh, effort. So yeah, just go back over it with uh with marker. Cat has her hand raised. Hey, cat, what's up? So mine went okay, yeah. um, except for the legs in the middle and <laughs> the splotches I tried to add. Whoa! And then here, when I actually printed the head, uh -huh. it pinchers for itself. Okay. Well, so if if those don't work, so here, um, if you go back to mine for a second, like I'm, there are definitely things about mine that didn't print well either. So what I just do is I just take my marker and go back in and fix them. Just take your marker and go back. Now that you have everything kind of like mapped out because everything is kind of, um, everything is, is, is kind of symmetrical. Now you know where things go. Take your marker and go back over it. It's totally fine. Like go, and, and fix up any of those details that might not have worked in the printing. Layla says working good. Awesome. You know what? I'm thinking that I need a couple more sections as I'm working. So I'm actually going to do a few more sections with my black marker down here to give me a couple of other spaces to color in. So maybe I'll do like another section here. And I'll do another one here. And we'll see how that goes because I've already started coloring mine, but we'll see. I'm experimenting today. It's all about experimenting. Kind of worked. I might have to go back over that one a little bit. That's okay. Megan would like to share hers. Let's see, Megan. Whoa, that came out good. That came out really good. Nice. If you're done with it, try to do a second one. Try to do another one. Or like, like, yeah, totally. Like if, add more to it, try to do a different animal or a different, different creature. Just see what, see what happens. See, so I have to go back over this one because it didn't really work, but that's okay. 
I'm going to go over this one too. Yeah, sometimes with the small little details, it gets a little harder. Kind of symmetrical. Yeah, it'll work. It'll work. Good enough. Afna would like to share hers. Yeah, let's see, Afna. Wow. I made just like a ladybird, but I pulled a little bit of green here in the top, dark green. Uh huh. Very cool. Don't forget to color in the legs too and the head. Okay? Yeah. That looks yeah. great so far. But, really nice. But, yeah, and I don't want to do another butterfly. And oh, tomorrow I could do a butterfly. That's a great idea. I love it. Yeah, you can take this. You can take this uh, style of working and 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 do your own thing with it. Really cool. Yeah, like I could do. Very cool. Yeah, you could make a butterfly with it. You could do a different beetle. What else? But what other kind of shapes could you do? Like mom knows how to print the those butterflies and that. <laughs> well, a butterfly would be pretty pretty cool because you just on one side you would just do a big wing. And then you'd have to fold it over to print the other wing. <laughs> yeah. You can look at pictures. Sometimes I find looking at pictures help me. When I'm not sure how to do something, I look at a picture of like what a butterfly looks like for some examples. That's why I like having, that's why I like having books like this around because it gives me lots of uh, inspiration to and, work from. And butterfly is one of my favorite insects. Oh yeah, butterflies are beautiful. They're so pretty. Yeah, they have a lot of colors. Yeah, they do. Great idea. Nice work. Really nice work. Don't forget to color in the legs. Color in the legs so, um, so that you can finish it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Layla would like to share. Let's see, Layla. Oh, that came out nice. Were you using um, markers to color it in or watercolors? Um, I use markers. Yeah, oh, wow. Those markers, the marker effect came out really nice. That Thank looked you. awesome. Yeah. What, what kind of, I'm curious, were you using Crayola? I'm curious what, what, what brand marker you were using. Just Crayola. Yeah. Crayola, okay, yeah. Crayola seems to work the best. I don't know. Yeah. There's something about the way that they do their color. It's like lots of, lots, they're just, they're good markers. Yeah. That looks awesome. I love it. Very Thank cool. You. All right, I'm still working on coloring in mine. Trying to color in all the, all the areas because I, I feel like it looks, everything looks a little more finished when you've really colored in and try, and try your best to like take your time, not scribble, really color in all the areas. Try to like make sure there's no like white spots showing through the, of the paper through. I think I'm gonna, I like this orange color. I'm gonna do this orange here. Yeah, if anybody else wants to share, just let us know. I like this because it's almost like magic. It's like, because they just kind of come, they all come out really neat looking. You get effects that you wouldn't get doing uh, art in any other in any other way. Whoa, Afna, nice. That looks awesome. I did them like black here, the leg. Okay. Okay. And those like these cripply things that they're up here. I made them black all through, and the face I made it. I don't know if this is a face or what, but I made it orange. Cool. Good choice, good choices. I like it. Nice work. Thank you. Soren has his hand up. Soren. So I'd like to share. Yeah. So mine sure. is kind of ripped. Mine is kind of ripped. Oh yeah, the paper. The paper that can happen to the paper. But so, so I made it inside it silver, and then I made these two green, and I made these all orange. And then I made these green and orange stripe. And then on this, accidentally, I did this one yellow, red, yellow, and then this one red, yellow, yeah, red. Turn it so, turn it so we can see it. Ooh, yours, yours almost looks like a scarab. 
like a scarab beetle. It's a type of beetle. It looks really oh, cool. Oh, three two seconds. feet, so I accidentally didn't, like, copy the other one. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe he's moving his legs. <laughs> Maybe one leg is, like, up because he's walking. It's all right. I you got the you got the um the part of the body right with the with the. Well, um, I mean, I didn't call, copy the color of the leg. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. You got the you did the you did the red, orange, yellow. I see what you mean. Oh well, that's okay. No worries. The what is it like? Bob Ross always says it's a it's a happy accident. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna spotlight Sophia and Emily. Yeah, Sophia, Emily, let's see. So I used paint for this. Ooh. Beetle. Cool. Very nice. Are you gonna are you gonna add paint into the the inside of it? Or is it gonna is he gonna stay white? Yeah, I'm gonna add paint inside. Oh, I like it. It looks cool. Uh, I like uh, I like the color palette you chose with the purples and the pinks and the blues. Like a cool color palette. Mine, I use marker. Nice. Nice. Very cool. I like it. Look, your printing looks like it came out. You might have to go over that top leg, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah, you might have to just, you might have to just draw that one in. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> but the other ones came out really cool. I like, yeah. Do you have a color palette in mind for what colors you're going to color them in? Uh, I already did green and blue. I'm not really sure about the other colors. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Laura has her hand up. Yeah, Laura, what's up? I finished my beetle. Ooh, nice colors. I like the palette you chose. Really nice. Really nice work. You have, if you have time, you're welcome to do a, a second one. And if you're, if you're totally done, don't forget to sign your work at the bottom to say, to like show that it's yours. Okay. I think that came out really nice, though. Good Thank work. you. Hmm. So I think that one thing I didn't add that I probably want to add in, I'm going to add in some eyes. I'm just going to draw them in. Some eyes here. Eyes. Okay. And there's a question. Is it okay if I leave the Zoom meeting early? Yeah, sure. If you have, absolutely, if you have to leave. No worry. Uh, no worry, Keely. Keely. <laughs> Do you have work you want to share with us before you have to go? Uh, <laughs> if not, if not, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of don't want to share mine. Okay, no worries. No worries. Awesome. All right. Well, I hope you had fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right, so I'm just finishing the coloring. I think Afna wants to share. Yeah, Afna. <laughs> oh, nice colors. Nice colors that, you've, that you have chosen there. Yeah, I put like a stem or I didn't want to make a flower, but I did it can because uh, this red of this, like it's like, don't let me put pink or, like, orange for the, you know, the thing that they need. Okay. Oh, I heard you say a flower. That's also an interesting idea for another project you could print. You could do a butterfly one, and you can also do a flower one. Yeah, the body, this one. Ooh, I see that little flower in the bottom. Very cool. <laughs> nice work. Really nice work. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I'm just trying, working on trying to finish coloring in these legs. Um, how's everybody else doing? We all good? good. Soren has his hand up. Yep, Soren, what's up? So I made a name for mine. Yeah, what's the name? It spoke crazy, the Fang Legend. The, the Fang Legend Ghost. So I'll tell you how it spells. T E H T E H. Uh huh. F A N G L E G E N T D G O S T. Oh, wow. so basically, most of the words are spelled 
So all the words were not spelled the way they are. Only Fang is spelled the right way. <laughs> Other than not. Even Legend. It even has... And Legend would have been right if... If it didn't have the T. <laughs> I like that you came up with a whole name for it. Do you want to... Are you, do you, do, are you going to give it, like, protection? Is it, like, a beetle that camouflages itself? Or is it a beetle no. that has, like, poison to protect itself? No, but... I, that just gave me a cool idea. So it's really fast, and these two hands that we can punch really hard, and these two can kick really hard, and these two can blast like poisonous like bombs out at the enemies, but only from sides. So then, and these two can blast like missiles. Whoa, cool. All right, so it's like a very protected beetle. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, and plus it has lasers here. These two can shoot lasers. <laughs> Laser beetle. All right, I see Kat has her hand up. What's up, Kat? Whoop. You turning? I think you. I think it froze. Did it freeze? Okay, we'll come back to Kat. Okay, Kat, we'll come back to you because your camera froze. Is there anybody else? Who, oh, wait, I see cats. I see okay. it. It froze now. Go back to cat. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. That's really nice. That came out beautiful. I um, used watercolors. Yeah, you used the watercolors. Yeah, I like how that came out. That looks really, really cool. I like the green, the, uh, the, are his mandibles green at the top? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are cool. I like, I like how that came out really really neat these are like um have you ever heard of like ink blots <laughs> where you like if you do an ink blot test it kind of looks like an ink blot um very cool i like the i like the colors that you chose and i also think that the printing came out really nice i hope you hang that one up <laughs> thanks yeah no problem it's really nice oh megan here's, agrees she says it's really pretty <laughs> here's judy judy let's see Oh, Judy, that came out really nice. That's really good. Really, really good. It was very much fun. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, Liliana and Heather Rose. Yeah, let's see, girls. Um, so there's me, too. This is her first one. Okay. Cool. Here's her Ooh. second. Ooh, that one came out cool. I like it. It's bigger. <laughs> nice. Very nice. I like that it's like a checker plaid plaid beetle. Here's mine. Ooh, nice. Ooh, that one came out. I like the shapes on the back. It's almost like um like a a spider. What's that spider that has the hourglass? The black widow? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And its mandibles are like really big. <laughs> And you got you nailed the leg shape. You totally nailed the leg shape for oh, for the for the legs. Yeah. Nice job, really nice job. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Here's oh, Akna. That makes it look really cool. Akna, yeah. I did like I did one more thing I wanted to show. Okay, show. I want to call this bell. Oh, it's the bell that, beetle. My grandma and grandpa will give me a little cat who called who was the rainbow unicorn cat and, and if it, there was a stick and but it's in the box and they want to, because of, you know there's virus so they can't like give it to me or uh huh so that's why so that's why yeah, I'm telling you that I'm calling this Bella. So I'm calling the cat also Bella. Aww, that's sweet. That's a that's a sweet tribute to the cat. <laughs> Aww. And one, it was a puppy who we called the Bella, but it's like did it, it was like something like somebody used it and kept, get it back. So that's why I like it. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. so they give 
giving me another one. I have a l little puppy from my grandma and grandpa also. The unicorn cat also from my grandma and grandpa. But, uh, <laughs> well, you'll ha on a walk, when you go on a walk, you'll have to, you guys will have to look for beetles. You'll have to do a beetle hunt and see if you can find any. <laughs> And see if you see it, if they have any cool patterns. But nice job, and I like the tribute to the kitty cat. Yeah, and the like, and I have a puppy that is black and white. That oh, so cute. That, that is that my grandma and grandpa who I told you. Oh, well, thanks for sharing, Afna. Um, I see there's a couple other people who want to share. I see Sophia and Emily have their hand raised, and Megan wants to share her second one. Yeah, let's see, Sophia, Emily. So I finished painting it, and I and I mixed the yellow with the red to make an orangey color. Ooh, nice, good painting job. I also like the multicolored head. <laughs> Thanks. He's so cute. He's like a little spunky beetle. I feel like your beetle has like character. <laughs> let's see. I, oh. uh, Oh, like to kind of help you up to the other side. Nice. So started, started to paint him in. <laughs> oh, I see. So you colored it and then you and then you folded it and you printed it to get the color on the other side. That's smart. Yeah. That's super smart. Very nice. Very clever. Clever thinking. <laughs> Good work, girls. Thank Megan, you. Can you share your other one. Ooh, Megan. Ooh. Look at this, like the target spiral on the abdomen. That came out really cool. And it almost looks Thank like it you. has wings. Cause we didn't, I didn't even add wings onto uh, this, but yeah, it looks like the middle section looks like it has wings. Yeah. How did, I how did you get the spiral effect? Oh, I just did a spiral on one side and I, um, and then you painted folded it, it over it with water and then just and you printed, printed, it. printed cool. it. Yeah. That's awesome. I like that effect. It came out Thank cool. You. Um, Layla, you want to Layla. share? Yeah, sure, Layla. Okay. <laughs> ah, a grid beetle. Cool. I like his striped, like, it's like the colors of a watermelon, watermelon head. <laughs> That's cool. Very nice. Nice, nice patterns. <laughs> Did you have fun doing it? Yeah, awesome. Really good work. Really nice work. <laughs> All right. Is anybody else? Was there anyone else who wants to share? Um, oh, Soren. I see Soren's Soren. hand. Yeah, go ahead, Soren. Do your, so, do your last so share. I want to share. I didn't. I didn't do anything new, but so what I realized I wanted to share because of this, because I saw like these parts suddenly like got a little rainbow water on them or something. Huh. It kind of actually looks like a real rainbow. Weird, kind of like how like uh, beetles actually have that ir iridescence. Very but cool. It doesn't have much of that rainbow, so it's kind of com uh, it's kind of cool for me. So that's what I wanted to show. Oh, thanks for sharing. I love, so I love happy accidents like that. Yeah, I love. Sometimes when you're doing art, you get like really cool effects, especially when you're doing something new. Cool, Soren. Thanks for sharing. You're um, Laura, I think Laura has her hand up. I'll mute myself. Laura. I made a butterfly. Ooh, very nice. Beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, don't hold it up too long because it's starting to drip. That came out really nice. Very pretty. Nice taking uh, taking what we did and, and making something new out of it. Very cool. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else who wants to share? Cat. Oh, cat. Yeah, let's see, cat. Um, so I started making a second one. Yeah. And it, so the printing, I decided I to do something pretty cool with it. So mm -hmm. when I printed it, and even when I did it, there's like a little gap right here. Uh-huh. So I'm going to put um, wings. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to look cool. I like the, I like the, are you using the watercolor to print it? Yeah. Yeah, those are good. I noticed you have the, that, um, uh, I can't remember the name of that brand, but that watercolor set is a good, a good kind of watercolors. 
they make they have good good coverage they have, they're they're good watercolors um awesome awesome these are these came out so cool guys really nice work really really good work uh last call for anybody who would like to share who hasn't had a chance yet kaden kaden yeah we haven't seen yours kaden Not quite done yet. That's okay. Show what show what you've got so far. Okay. Ooh, that came out so cool. So cool. I'm working on the head now. Okay. I like that. Is that like a badge or what's on his uh his his abdomen? That shape. I just made it up. It's like a I I did like the half like the twisted square thing and. Just got the idea to, of doing it. <laughs> that looks really cool. I like this. I like this effect. This look very nice job. Really good. Good work. Very cool. All right. Is there anybody else who has not shared who would like a chance to share? I think that's everybody. Oh, Lily's not here. I wanted to ask her if she if her ducklings hatched. I want to ask her next week. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, I guess I hope you had fun. I hope you, uh, hope you learned maybe a new, a new technique uh, so you can make your own. Uh, you can, you can take this and do this anywhere. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.